today than yesterday. And not as much as tomorrow. Than what has been. 
Amen. Have you ever been to that point, the point of no return? Have you ever gotten in a place in your situation where you're tired of the same old drama and you know you need to move forward? Have you ever gotten to a place on your job where you feel like you can't stand the same old games one more day and you know you need to move forward? Have you ever gotten to a place in the church where you're tired of business as usual and you're ready for some fresh anointing? Have you ever gotten to a place where you want to move forward? I know somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Let me say that I do not believe that our arrival in that place where we need to move forward is a bad thing. You see, because without some level of discomfort about what is, there can be no transformation. The problem arises when although we are at the point of no return, although we get to a place where we know we can't turn back, we want nothing more than to go back. We become stagnant. We get stalled. We get stuck. We're too afraid to go forward. We stay right where we are complaining, fighting about stuff that doesn't even matter. We're stranded on the sandbar of fear in the middle of the sea of endless possibilities. And we don't know how to navigate ourselves through. We're, we're standing at the crossroad of life where limit and possibility intersect. With a drop-dead decision deadline yet, we're being pulled back, backward. We want to embrace the sunshine of new shores, but we enjoy the security and peaceful shade of the past. We want the space of newly constructed house, but we want the rent payment of the one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Somebody to say amen. We want the conveniences of marriage, but the freedom of singlehood. We want the accomplishment of entrepreneurship, but the comfort of a steady paycheck. We want the newness of 21st century ministry, and to reach a 21st century audience, but we want to do things the way we've always done them. We want the future but we too focused on the past. And we need to understand that in any progress forward, we cannot simply throw away the things that got us here. The rich history we possess has helped us to make us who we are today. But there's a difference between allowing your past to inform you and allowing your past to inhibit you. You don't just throw away history. There's a word from the Ghanaian culture of twi called sankofa. Anybody ever heard the word sankofa? The word literally translates mean go back and get it. The meaning that has been co-opted for the word means get the things from the past so that they can empower you towards your future. In other words, you want to drive a car forward, you better look back first or you might crash it. But beloved, we need to remember the fact, we need to remember the fact that a windshield is much larger than a rear view mirror. For our own purpose. An auto manufacturer understands we need to see some more, we need to see more of what's ahead than what's behind. The point of the rear view mirror is to keep in, us in perspective and to remind us of the dangers that we have avoided so that if we see potholes in front of us, we know to steer around those potholes. And we need to look forward because forward is where we're going. And then, but, but every now and then when things get rough and ridiculous, I look back in the rearview mirror of life and begin to think things over and I can see how far God has brought me. That this gives me the proper perspective on how to get where I'm going. And I can see the last time I thought my failures were bigger than my future. I'm not, but, but, but I'm moving ahead now. I, I can see in the mirror the last time the devil almost took me out, but he should have killed me when he had the chance because I'm moving forward now. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I can see in the mirror the last time I thought God wasn't going to show up on time. But my God, my God, He might not come when you want Him, but He's going to be right. Let your past inform you, but don't let your past inhibit you. In this gospel text, Jesus is confronted by a few of the disciples of John the Baptist who are discussing the practice of fasting. Jesus is trying to explain to them there are two different systems of belief and operation. One was the old paradigm, the other one was the new. Jesus is teaching them that the former way they did things concerned only repentance, while the new way concerned repentance plus hope and liberation. Prior to this, they had fasted to be forgiven from sins. Now, fasting is a way to deal not only with sin, but with the imminence of God and God's ability to change our lives. Jesus then imparts a story, a parable, which he says, Do you never put new wine into old wine skins? Otherwise, the skins will bust open wine will spill out and, and the skins will be ruined. You put new wine in new wine skins and it's all good. In ancient Palestine, the practice of bottling wine involved the use of animal skins. The winemaker would get a soft piece of animal hide and tie it off. And he would fill it, fill the skin with unfermented wine. During the fermentation process, the yeast in the brew would expand and the soft skin uh, until, uh, in the soft skin until the skin became hard. By the time the new wine was ready, by the time it had, be it, it, by the time it had become old wine, the new skin, which had been soft, is now hardened and become old skin that would be squeezed so one could enjoy the wine. Jesus paints this picture important picture in order to let us know two things. First is that he's talking about a process that new wine is going through. Fermentation. The wine is going through fermentation. Fermentation is a process in which the wine itself changes because of what's already in it and it reacts to its environment and it expands. Okay. When, when, when the new wine is placed in an old wine skin, the change process is impaired. But the new one, when, but, but in the new skin, the change is possible because it's expandable. You see, you see, new wine has started to change, but it's not finished. It's it's in a state of becoming. And the truth is that you and I are the new wine. And, and we are in the state of becoming. Truth is, we're all in the process of becoming. Think about it. You may not be what you ought to be, but you can shout about the fact that you definitely are not what you used to be. Amen. I mean, things that used to make you mad don't get you mad anymore. You, but don't push you, but, but don't push you too far. Because you might just begin speaking in some tongues that are not of men and angels. Amen. Like new wine, you're still in process. God is still working in you. Albertine Walker used to say, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I, I get excited about being that new wine because it uses the stuff that I've experienced in reaction with the climate and uh, so that I can be made into the person that God wants me to be. Hallelujah. God can use my hurts to make me a healer. God can use my disappointments to transform me into an encourager. God can use my obstacles to turn me into a climber. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the process of becoming. Because God is able to take the stuff that's on the inside of me already and transform it into something that can change the world. Second thing about new wine is no matter how you constrain it, it will expand. And if you put it in an old wine skin, it might burst the wine skin. There's something in new wine that will expand in spite of how hard you try to constrain it. There's a yeast element in new wine that under certain conditions 
expands in order to make the wine what it is supposed to be. And guess what? It will expand even if it has to break the container that it's placed in. This is what Jesus shares about new wine and old wine skins. The old skins have lost their elasticity and will burst during the change process. And I contend that those of us in here who are interested in becoming have, have something in us that keeps us expanding. Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah. No matter how people try uh, or, or the past tries to keep you back, like new wine, we're going to keep expanding. Hey. Why? Because church school, we have someone living within us and among us that still chooses to live among the people. Brother, sister, when God saved you, God put something inside of you so that when life tries to constrict you, tries to crush you, you will expand outward again. God has put something in you so that no matter how life, how hard life hits you, you can bounce back. When you get into the inevitable collisions of life, like an airbag, it will explode to keep you safe. God's Holy Ghost is the renewing agent within you that is the something on the inside that wells up when the presses of life are on you and you, God uses that to transform you into the person that God wants you to be. You are in the process of becoming. When I think I'm, of being guided by the wisdom, grace, and goodness of God, I'm, I'm convinced that where I'm going is better than where I'm going. Thank you, Lord. And even when it gets hot, even when it gets tight, even when it gets uncomfortable, God will keep you in spite and keep you moving forward. I know it's going to be better. Hallelujah. It's going to keep getting better because the best is yet to come. That's how walking with God is. Every round goes higher, higher. I can't go back because it says forgetting those things which are behind and straining forward to those things that are ahead. I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I press until that which constrains me breaks. I press until I have grown my constrictions. I Towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. 